Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and in this video I wanted to talk about another problem solving tool, or better yet a prioritizing tool that's oftentimes used in engineering and, and other applications. Our manufacturing is probably one of the better examples, is a, a called Pareto. Or the Pareto observation, the Pareto principle, you know, several names that people refer to it as. And I want to start off talking about this one scenario. When I, you know, many years ago, back when I became a, a manufacturing engineer, I was out on the factory floor and, and one of the rules or one of the goals or objectives of manufacturing engineering is, is addressing manufacturing problems that are on the plant floor. You know, and in my case, I had a bank of CNC machines, 10 CNC machines that all had to produce the same product and I was responsible for any downtime, any updates, any advancements, any new new process changes that happened on that floor. You know, and if it was going to improve the process, reduce cycle time, or get rid of any type of issues, you know, that was what I was there for. But one of the big ones, you know, one of the most obvious ones that anybody who's worked in a, a factory setting is that you're called in for a lot of, you know, manufacturing issues, particularly persistent problems that the operator or the tool setter can't do, take care of on their own. You know, they look at, at a manufacturing engineer to address them. So that's what I did for a few years uh, as an engineer, as a young engineer, when I first started uh, working in manufacturing. Now, one thing that I found, you know, when I first was getting started was how overwhelming this can be. Uh, you, I actually spent the bulk of my time on the floor dealing with a variety of problems, problems that had me basically chasing my tail all over the place, you know, during that first year. It was a very, very stressful because it was hard to just get my arms around what the problem was. So I, I needed to use a tool in order to help me address it. You know, I was dealing with things such as broken tools, you know, the machine having some sort of an alarm that needed to be reset and why it happened. If there were any kind of coolant failures, you know, high pressure coolant system wouldn't work or it just wasn't getting enough pressure. Uh, issues with the fixtures, you know, parts being misaligned or not being clamped down properly. Uh, parts coming in out of tolerance, you know, having actually defective parts. And of course, you know, issues with parts getting to one place or another are conveyor issues. So I had all these problems that I had to try and address. I was constantly getting called down um, several times a day, you know, several times a week, trying to address all these problems. And the most overwhelming problem, the most overwhelming stressful thing about all this was I couldn't figure out which problems should get my attention first. How do you actually prioritize these? Because everyone who was part of my stakeholders, you know, whether it was the operator, whether it was the line supervisor, whether it was the production manager, they all had a problem that they were concerned with and usually it was the problem that was in their face at the time you know so i had to try and figure out what were the true big problems versus which were the ones that were just causing the most headache at the moment so i needed a tool that would help me understand which problem was going to get my attention now a little backstory on this guy this is a sociologist, an engineer, an economist, political scientist, philosopher named Wilfredo Pareto. You know, he was born in the mid 1800s and died in the relatively early 1900s. So, so not that long ago, not even a full hundred years ago, that this guy was was actually on the scene, and he came up with an observation that really does change a lot of problem solving and really caused people to look at problem solving and issues in general totally different what he did you know as you know, an italian economist was he was working on a project and he noticed that in milan and that's a picture of of milan italy what he noticed was that 80 percent of the wealth was actually controlled by 20 percent of milan's population the other 80 percent of the population a full 80 percent uh, eight out of ten people were only in ownership of the other 20% of Milan's resources. You know, he thought this was an interesting observation, not just because he saw this with Milan, but he saw this with several local economies, that it was always an 80% of, of the wealth was being controlled by 20% of the population. He saw this observation also into his own garden, where 80% of the plants in the garden didn't require nearly as much issue as the 20%. He spent most of his time addressing 20% of the plants and vegetables in his garden. 
and that's what we call the 80-20 rule or Pareto's uh, principle. Some people call it again Pareto's observation. Some people actually miss or characterize it as, as the Pareto's rule. It's not necessarily a rule, it's, it's more of an observation. Now, what this, what this means is that you can extend this observation to several things in life. One of the things is 80% or 20% of your, or excuse me, 80% excuse me, of your productivity is actually going to come from 20% of your employees. You know, the other 80% is, you know, aren't going to be nearly as productive. You know, when it comes to looking at your customers, only 20% of your customers are going to be responsible for 80% of your revenue. So there's generally going to be customers that are, you know, your big customers that you want to keep satisfied, you know, whether it's a bigger supplier or whether it's somebody who just comes in a lot, uh, you know, that's going to be how your revenue is going to break down. It's going to break down roughly along the lines of 80-20. And in a production setting, it kind of goes that 80% of your problems are going to come from 20% of your equipment. You know, that kind of goes back to this whole idea of 80-20. So, 20% of your inputs are responsible for 80% of your outputs. 20% of your efforts are going to get you 80% of your results. Now, what does this say? Well, for one reason I call this an observation is because, you know, it's not always 80-20. You know, you can't make that a hard and fast rule. Sometimes it'll be 90-10, sometimes it'll be 70-30, but what it actually tells you is that the distribution is not going to be even. As a matter of fact, most things in life are not distributed evenly. You know, going back to the garden example, if you go, if you were to plant several different vegetables in a garden this summer, you would find that you're going to spend 80% of your time addressing 20% of the problems with some of those plants. The rest will thrive on their own. You'll, you'll have to do some weeding, some watering, but the majority of your efforts are going to be very unevenly distributed in that garden and that's the same that you'll see an observation in most things in life so what does this have to do back with our original problem as a manufacturing engineer so one thing that that did for me when I actually had to consider all these problems was it gave me two ways of looking at this and I'm gonna show both of them to you how that Pareto uh, principle worked out one thing I did was I looked at the number of calls I was getting and what those problems were and what I found was that roughly 75%, not quite 80, about 75% of my problems were actually coming from just two issues. So it was, you know, I've, that, that was sort of a breakdown of the 80-20 rule. So if I just address the broken tools and the fixture issues, my problems would go down dramatically. Now that's one way of looking at the problem. Now, just from a practical manufacturing engineer standpoint, you know, you, you try and understand this broken tool and this bank of 10 machines that might not necessarily be the most effective is just saying, well, what's causing these tools? There really is a systemic problem with the tool, maybe a bad supplier, maybe there's, you know, a bad shipment of something coming in that's causing all these tools to be, to, to be uh, more frail, more fragile. But a much more effective way of looking at this is looking at the machines themselves. So like I said, I had 10 machines in the bank that I was doing all my CNC work. And I wanted to see, well, which machines were causing me the most problems? Which machines, if I were to address them, would I actually start getting the most impact? And what I found was machines number four and seven were some of the biggest problems I got. As a matter of fact, in this case, again, it was 75% of my calls were coming on these two machines. Now, that didn't necessarily mean that the, the problems and the machines lined up. You know, there may be some broken tools or maybe the bulk of the broken tools came out of these two machines. Maybe the bulk of the fixturing issues came from these two machines. Or maybe it was, you know, distributed a little differently to where, you know, this, these machines were just the older machines that needed to actually be addressed for several different other quality issues. And they just came in the form of all these different complaints. But the point was, was these two machines, per the 80-20 rule, were draining 20% uh, or excuse me, 80% of you know, the bulk of my efforts. So it was again, eight, you know, it fell along the lines of 75, 25. So Pareto analysis, you know, what you want to know about a Pareto analysis, a data-driven tool that helps you prioritize and directs your effort. It also helps you allocate your resources away from the trivial many, you know, machines number one, two, and three weren't really that big of a deal 
to the vital few, in this case machines number four and seven. So this is Professor Cummings and this was just a, a brief video on Pareto analysis and you know you can have uh, any of my other videos in this series on Lean Six Sigma. Uh, you can you know just subscribe to the channel or you know just come on and to the engineer's reference and thanks for watching.